today. On a Thursday. Uh, all right. Fine, we'll do it on a Thursday. A Thursday? At least do it on Friday. Hello, folks. Football Manager teasing. They'll they'll post some headline features today. So this is my reaction to those features. They better be good, otherwise this video will not be not be enjoyable for anyone really, especially me, because I'll have to sit here and go. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, things we know so far. There is a new tab on the left-hand side. We don't know what it is. And uh, we also know that inverted wingers can now play in the advanced sort of left wing, right wing positions. Uh, also, contracts have changed. So you can have different names for things. So it's not key player and things like that anymore. Or first team. It's now uh, other stuff. So, I mean, something to look forward to. Hopefully, they'll go into more detail on that. They released, they released some screenshots because Arsenal have an official version of the game where you can get the licensing for Arsenal within that version and that version only. Um, that's all we know so far. The thing is, this is all fun and games until you realise that I could be here for hours just waiting, hoping for a snippet. Of... Can't do anything else now. My whole life's ruined. I have to sit and wait for this now. So, because uh, I have to know. This is, this, is, this is my livelihood, viewers. I need to know what's going on. And so far, all we know is that they might announce features today. Could be a lie, could be a hoax, could be a prank. We could be being pranked. Since when was 20 past two? I guess 20, sort of a 20, isn't it? I guess 20 is 20 involved. Right, they finally said, it's time. Who's ready for some headline features? Me. I am ready for some headline features. Give me all your headline features. All the headlines, I want them. Right, the first one is in. Club Vision. There's a video as well, so we'll watch the video. Hopefully there's sound to it. Start your save in the boardroom as the chairman introduces you to the club and their ambitions. Club culture, devise a long-term plan and meet the board's objectives. Right, that seems pretty similar to what we have already when we have a chat with them. But, um... Right, Club Vision, There's a, so you accept that AC AFC will then hire a manager, so you accept the job, lovely. The board now sets long-term ambitions. Right, okay, develop uh, using the club's youth system, work within a wage budget, five-year plan, oh, that's interesting. Uh, end of 2001 season reached the plus. So you've got to do things on your five-year contract or long-term contracts. When you first get a save on Football Manager, it gives you like a one-year deal, so I'm not sure how it'll change the very start of the game from now on if you can sign up to a five-year deal if different clubs will offer different contracts i mean that's kind of interesting and then uh yeah you confirm that the club's vision and expectations meeting so they will again offer you to do things again pretty similar to what we have right now and then there's a, a bevy of things there can we make that look, look look a little bit bigger i mean the 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 quality on Twitter, not always the best viewers, but um, Club Vision matches the fans are pleased with the results. So that's basically a board summary, which we've got already. And uh, yeah, tactics as well. They, they're even vocal on that now, are they? Just piping up. All right, then. Well, the first thing then, Club Vision has been introduced. Good, bad, indifferent. I mean, I'll rate it out of 10. It's like a five for me. It's kind of what we already have. They've just advanced it a little further. All right, the next one's already been announced. Good, our oh, timing there, nine seconds ago. Development Center. Right, there's another video for this, so we'll go through that. There's no sound to these videos. Uh, a new centralized hub for your high potential players. There we go. Monitoring young stars, keep track of your loans uh, or loanies, uh, analyze youth intake candidates. I hope it's not just to do with like high potential players. I hopefully you can do this with all players. We'll see if that becomes evident now. Again, Development Center, uh, we've got this. Should I make this a bit bigger? We'll, we'll try and make this a bit bigger. Right, do you know what I've done? I've gone on their website. This is far easier. Um, so here we are. One of the most engaging aspects of Football Manager is developing talent and unearthing wonder kids. Agreed. Uh, who you can turn into world beaters. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the overview screen. So we've got a development tab. So that is the new tab. We knew that was a thing. I'd circled it on Twitter. I knew it was going to be a thing. And this then is the screen for that. Right. I mean, how can we make this look better on the video? Hold on just one second here, viewers. So first team candidates. Okay, so and you can see a progress chart of what they're up to and then it tells you if they could potentially uh, be a player better than other players again so this is information we kind of already have but it's now put in its own screen and it looks far better you've got youth candidates you're under 19 so you can keep an eye on everything in a far more synced manner good needs attention uh some of these players again the pro so the progress of youth players is a massive factor i think development of youth players is something we've wanted for a long time this just gives you a better understanding of who's coming through who's developing well and who's maybe not developing well and charts their progress i hope you can click these charts are there more screenshots here 
So again, players are on loan. You can keep an eye on what they're doing. You've, you've had this screen before. It's just in a different place now. Uh, and you've got whether they're happy on loan, their playing time, what it's supposed to be, promised playing time. So that's quite good. You, again, you keep track on if they're actually being used, as was suggested by the coaches that have taken them on board. Uh, you then have this screen here, the development screen, which... Um, I mean, yeah, again, is is pretty similar to what we have now. Is is the the youth intake report, and uh, then finally we've got this here. I say finally, maybe not finally. So this is I say this, this is Saint Etienne two, um, which I assume is is the reserve team for Saint Etienne. I like the reserves and the twenty threes, whatever you'd say, and. Um, yeah, it lets you manage this slightly differently, I assume. Yeah, you're, you're having a say now over what happens with your second team, which, again, you kind of had before, but, again, this makes it far simpler. I do like that. So far, I'm quite impressed. The boardroom stuff, I was less bothered about, but the development centre also incorporates the management options for the youth and reserve squads. Each squad has its own tab within the development centre with a drop-down menu containing a wealth of squad information. You can view everything from their current match tactics, team and individual training dynamics screens and their recent, recent match analysis. You can also make decisions and changes from, these, uh, from within these menus. For example, adding first team squad members into your youth team for an upcoming feature from the tactics screen. Okay, and then you've got staff as well who will do what staff normally do. Right, have they given more? I assume they've given more. All right, yeah, there's a, there's a couple here. Playing time pathway. Okay, again, I'm going to click the link to this. This is far more easy. Uh, playing time pathway. Fort Manager has redefined and re-envisioned player development. Yes, we've seen that already. Uh, an aspect of the game that is high on the priority list of every player. Agreed. Becoming a manager gives you the chance to carefully control over how thing, uh, sorry, how you bring through talent while overseeing the progress of your important players too. So we're giving you more freedom in this department, more ability to plan long term and set individual pathways for all players. Uh, more so than ever, we see young players come in and with a clear route to becoming a star player or senior player immediately established as an important or star players from the moment they walk through the door. Okay, right. So. When you're now getting, well, when you're signing a young player now, you're sort of saying to them, right, if you want to be a star player on our side, we will create that path for you by year 2021, etc., etc. Um, this will obviously be a thing through negoti negotiating. I love that Delafayu has been given that, like, because he was a former Wonder Kid. Um, it'd be interesting to see then with Delafayu or or players like that if they would continually want playing time, and if older players then will want less playing time or if you've got big players that still want like the, the same amount of playtime as they were getting when they were a key player that'd be, that'd be or a star player as it's now known and fm20 when negotiating a player's contract you can fine-tune their pathway through changes to their contract you can alter their playing time with 12 descriptive statuses 12 descriptive statuses okay so you've got star player important player regular starter squad player fringe player uh, emergency backup you wouldn't want to be that would you you wouldn't want to be the emergency backup for anyone break with your prospects future prospects and youngster so again these have been redefined uh than what they were before you've also got the one there which is impact sub which i, I mean okay impact that's not on this list so they obviously change maybe based on age and things like that i'm not too sure um interestingly over on the the coach report anything different there to note not immediately not immediately standing out but okay uh, this gives you way more definition to a player standing within your club from day one of them arriving, either from another club or the academy. Again, you can check out these for yourself. Um, but yeah, from emergency backup to star player and everything in between. And again, a few more of these. Cup goalkeeper, now an option. So maybe goalkeepers have got slightly different roles than they would have had before. First choice keeper, future prospect, all those again, similar to what we had before. And um, yeah, I mean, they've got their own, goalkeepers have their own pathway now, I say with, with emergency backups and things like that. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Backroom improvements, something we've all been crying out for. Uh, one of the ways that Football Manager continues to replicate world football with such accuracy is our huge network of help from people who work in real world football. From improved advice and feedback to new roles, altogether in FM20, you'll have more support available to you uh, from the staff than before. Right, okay, I suggest, so now she's suggesting picking teams before, um, that's interesting, so suggested squads rather than just like the quick pick function that we've got before. There, you can see it, they're suggesting a full squad. Which is interesting. I'm saying if it's good, if they're good for the role, good in the position, and the, and the reasons as to why they're selecting them, which is quite interesting. Are things like flair and movement potentially. Um, right, there's more to say here. As part of your pre-match news flow, you'll receive an inbox informing you uh, of your backroom team's advice. Okay, right. That that again, that goes into what we've seen before, and the team selection advice as to why they would maybe be played in there. There are some tick boxes, a tick the tick boxes which aren't completely. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure what that is. I guess they're, they're basically they're taking out the players that you may have already selected and bringing in 
players who they think will be more suitable for the roles. Okay, again, that's sort of like, it, they're basically giving Quick Pick its own screen before you go into things. That, that, that appears to be what it is. Unless, of course, Quick Pick's gone. And there's no more quick pick. There's still a quick pick. Okay, there's still, so there's still a quick pick for those that want it. Um, we've got, some, again, more information here about team-wise. I'm just looking to see if there's anything new. Of course, we've got the development screen there now. Um, but everything else seems not to be. We've got a square highlighted. So what's that all about then? Right, team selection advice is also available to you uh, anytime on the tactics screen. Just hit the selection advice button. Right, okay. But what's the, what's the square? Why have they selected a square for there? Huge positive influence from Saar and Danny Welbeck. So the encouraging side. So that square will now be used by these players. Is that what it's suggesting? I suggest that's what I suspect that's what it's, it's suggesting anyway. Um, and then there's loads of things to read. And as I want to keep this video somewhat succinct, I will let you read that for yourself. But again, looking at it, backroom staff, they're, they're helping more. They've got more use, more purpose. That's always a good thing, right? Okay, and the final one for today, they're saying, is graphical enhancements. Right, okay, so we'll go on to this. This this, this is quite... But so far, and I'm going to be honest, these are the headline features. There's not a huge amount of, like, things to go, wow, that's, like, that's game-changing. This might be it. We'll see. Graphical improvements. We strive to make each year's match experience of Football Manager the best looking in the series. And this year is no different with a renewed effort to introduce a range of graphical improvements that will make the match look more realistic than in FM or than ever, sorry, in FM20. Let's kick off by taking a look at the differences in players and textures. So I assume this is this year. The faces look quite real. I mean, if you base it on what we've seen in previous years, when it's basically been like made out of Play-Doh, I mean that's that's better. Uh, I would put hair on him, maybe. Our human models this year represent a significant upgrade from FM19. They could have gone back to FM17 to do that if they wanted to, really wanted to. Uh, we've reworked the base model to make it more lifelike with more depth than in previous years. The model now has a more realistic autonomy and bone structure, which results in a more lifelike appearance. And based on what I'm looking at there, like, yeah, it does, does look far better. They even give him a little bit more on the tie. They've they've clearly spent a lot of time working on this, which is nice to see. Really nice to see. Um, because of the improvements that we've made to the base human models in FM20, you'll notice that the manager looks not only more realistic in FM19, but it also has more detailed attire. That's all well and good for managers, right? But are the players, I assume this is a player, do the players look better than within the match engine? And is there any way of seeing that? Not necessarily i mean they've put this one here a dry grass pitch in fm20 so we'll click on that um if and I've, again i feel like i'm giving my reaction here as a youtuber and i've got to be honest with what i'm saying if someone had shown that to me and said that's fm19 i would have said yeah it could be like what i will say actually is the camera angle looks different if that's a real camera angle that's available that, that's quite cool i don't think we've got that camera angle right now that's that's interesting to me um so that's a dry pitch where obviously it looks a lot lighter and this is a wetter pitch when they've added water to the surface. Pitches are now affected by the weather in an obvious manner. So that suggests they were always impacted by the weather but now you can actually see it. During a game played in rainy conditions, for example, you'll notice sodden patches appearing in certain sections of the pitch whereas if a game has been played out during a sunny, uh, during sunny weather, you'll notice the pitch will appear dried out in a lighter colour. We've also added water and mud particles flying off the surface of the pitch, which leads, which will lead to visible deterioration of the pitch over the course of a match. That's quite interesting as well. One of the most, I say interesting, like it's just nice, isn't it? One of the most noticeable examples of this is when players make slide tackles, leaving a trail behind them when they've connected with the turf. Now, if they're doing that, let's hope the match engine physics are better than they have been before. Because slide tackles this year in FM19 have been a bit all over the shop, a little bit random, a little bit sporadic, like especially when you're getting booked and things. This suggests if they're doing things like that, where a slide tackle is leaving a mark on the pitch, the match engine should see significant improvements. What I will say, if that is the case, why wouldn't you mention that in your headline features of an improved match engine? I don't think I missed it, just to make sure I didn't miss it. Um, backroom improvements, path time, playing away, development center, the club vision. So, I mean, I've not missed it there. I just think, oh, again, I've got to be honest. The lighting in the FM20 has been improved as well to the introduction of image-based lighting. This improves the level of shading. I wish they'd shown us some video of it moving. Like, that would have been ideal. I don't think their YouTube channel have posted anything. Well, I'll take a look. No. <laughs> they haven't. I don't know what to think. No, I do know what to think. They, 
look, they're nice improvements. Don't get me wrong. They're all good. But this was this was advertised to, to us today as the headline features. And while I think some of the some of the things are really nice, it's not a, we've not moved massively forward from FM nineteen. I don't think. I think like some of the graphical improvements with the player faces and things like that. Like, yeah, it's good, but it's good because the last. It's partially part of me thinks that it's good because in previous years, like it's not been that good. So it had to improve this year. There was so much said about it. I've never seen like the reaction to last year's like regen faces and things weren't good. These look great, like comparatively, of course. These look really good. And while we maybe shouldn't, I've got again, I'm a consumer at the end of the day. While we shouldn't necessarily compare things to the likes of FIFA, they're, when, they're, when they're trying to use their match engine and 3D modeling, like we can only really compare it to that. And I think we've got to take that on board. And we've got to think about that as we look at this sort of thing. And does it does it live up to their standards? I mean, it's a lot closer. It's not as good, but it's a lot closer. Um, again, we're going to have to assume that the match engine's improved, I think. But. Let me know your thoughts, viewers. We've gone through some of the features. Uh, again, if you want to look in more detail, uh, check out Football Manager's Twitter or their, their website. Of course, it's got all these, this stuff on there. They've gone through, so just to recap then, Club Vision, Development Center, which I think is great, by the way. I think that's really nice. Again, putting putting stuff in more detail. And this isn't everything, by the way, of course. There'll be loads of little improvements across the board. Um, playing Time Pathway, again, that's more contract-based stuff. Battle improvements, getting your staff to help you more with team selection and things like that. And then graphical enhancements. So that's it. Keep an eye on our social channels for more future drops across the few, next few weeks, both here and on Miles' Twitter, of course, Miles Jacobson, Studio Director for Sports Interactive. So it's a 6 out of 10 in terms of like how excited I am. Uh, there's, look, there's lots to be pleased about, and it's a new game. There's going to be some improvement, right? So, you, so there's always going to be some improvement. Is there enough improvement from FM19? It's quite early to say. This is actually a video I noticed here, which they're just changing the colour of the wetness of the grass, where they're not actually showing any gameplay, which I think is curious. But again, time will tell. We'll see if anything comes from that. Well, let me know your thoughts then uh, in the comment section. I'll be reading through what you think of the suggestions. Favourite thing? Least favourite thing? Let me know in the comment section. And... Uh, yeah, Football Manager 20 around the corner. They've not announced when it's out either, but I assume it'll be sometime in November with the beta usually coming out sometime in October. So um, I should say, if you want to win a copy of Football Manager, to round things off nicely, there's a tweet in the description. Retweet and follow that. I'll be doing stuff over on Instagram. Uh, so make sure you follow following on Instagram, Dr. Benji FM, at Dr. Benji on Twitter, as well as on YouTube. We'll be doing a giveaway uh, for FM20 as well at some point. But yeah, lots of nice improvements, but that's kind of where it ends for me. As I say, sort of six out of 10. Hopefully they bring some new stuff to the table in the next few weeks. And um, yeah, you've been watching Dr. Benji. That's me. With love with care. From me, from me Ben. I'd love to go with Ben. I'll see you again very soon. Look after yourselves. I've got some notifications to read, so that's exciting. And no, I don't follow Jamie Carrick on Twitter. You've learned something new.